All right, uh, this is uh, just a short video on the match lock mechanism. Um, for you guys who are familiar with muzzle loaders, match locks, you might already know everything about them. You won't find anything new here. Uh, this is just a short little intro um, for the benefit of those who might not be familiar with match locks, not know anything about them, and they'd like to know how they work. Uh, so that's all this is. Uh, so what we have here is the lock, and uh, basically it looks like it's only three parts. It's really very simple. There's not much more to it than that, really. Lock plate, the trigger bar, and uh, sometimes called the dog. Um, depends. It had different names at different times. Sometimes it was called that because uh, some of them, the the head was carved to look like the head of a dog. Uh, it was also called the cock or the serpentine. Uh, we'll just call it the serpentine for now. Um, so you lift up on the trigger bar and the serpentine comes down, lowers the match into the pan. And how it works is pretty simple. In fact, it's probably the most simple of all lock designs. Okay, I'm not sure how well you can see that. I think that's good. Okay, what you've got here is you've got your trigger bar here, you've got your serpentine on this end, and you have this long thing here in the middle connecting the two. And it pivots on this screw right here. And this is this this is called the sear. When you lift up on the trigger bar, you're lifting up on this end of the sear, which pushes this end down. When you do that, it's turning this tumbler, rotating it like that, and the tumbler is tumbler is attached to the base of the serpentine. So when it turns, it pulls the serpentine down this way, lowering the match down into the pan. Just like this. Let's see if I can do this here. With holding in my hand is a bit difficult, but just like that. It's just a pivoting lever, basically. Very simple. And this doohickey right here is the spring, and that provides constant upward pressure on this side of the sear. So when you release the trigger, the trigger bar, um, it's always pushing up on this end, which, as you can see, turns the tumbler that way and holds the serpentine back. So it's always holding the, the lock in the, I guess you'd call it the open position, I don't know. Uh, so it's holding the match back away from the pan. So that's the purpose of the spring there, pushing up on the sear. And that's basically all there is to it. Match lock design is very simple. Um, one thing you may notice is that there's no pan like there is on a flintlock. A flintlock has a pan to hold the priming powder that the sparks go down into and on this if it had a pan it would be like right around here somewhere I guess. Um, the reason it doesn't have a pan I'll show you is because with a match lock the pan is not part of the lock it's part of the barrel. And let's see if I can turn this so you can see and it has, a, it has a pan cover on it. In this case it's closed. You open the cover to expose the pan, like that. And there's the pan. You put the priming powder in there. And it's part of the barrel, instead of part of the lock. So that's why it's not on there. And you can give me a second to slap this thing together. I'll show you how. I'll show you the whole how the whole thing works. Just take a second here. Not only is it a very simple functioning design, it's also very simple to take apart and put it back together. You can have the whole thing apart or back together in less than 30 seconds. And there we go. So you're pulling up on the trigger bar there, lowering the match. And you'll also notice that behind the pan is a very tall fence. This thing right here is called the fence. Uh, flintlocks have them too. They're usually not this tall though. They're usually pretty short. 
With a match lock, it's usually pretty tall, and that blocks the flash from coming back into your face. Uh, so you're not going to you're not going to get burned. Um, in fact, it's the, it's so tall that when you when you have the stock up to your shoulder and you're in the shooting position, you can't even see the pan because it's so high, because the fence is so high. And when you lower the match down to it, once it drops below the top edge of the of the fence here, you can't see that either. So you can't see it going down into the pan. Um, but that's not a problem because you don't need to watch that. Uh, with uh, with your view of the pan taken out of the equation, so to speak, that uh, that frees you up to concentrate on your aim. So that's good. And you don't need to to worry about the match coming down into the pan because with a little practice let's get this out of the way with a little practice you will be able to set the match in the jaws of the serpentine um, in the correct position every time so it always falls into the pan you'll never get it wrong once you've done it a few times you get used to it. it's very simple open the pan and if you've got this set in the correct length the end of the match drops right down into the pan boom just like that so there's no need to watch it going down. So it doesn't matter that the fence is blocking your view. It's not necessary to see it. Once you get the hang of it, you'll get it right every time. And, uh, and then you can focus on your aiming. Um, the pan, or the, excuse me, the pan cover, uh, should not be opened until you're ready to fire. Uh, it has a couple of purposes. It keeps, the, uh, keeps your powder from falling out in case you, if you're moving around, you tip your, your gun this way or that way or whatever. The powder won't fall out, it won't get blown out by the wind. And also it'll make sure that no ashes fall off the end of the burning match into the pan and boom, you've got yourself a, a, a shot that you didn't mean to make. So you don't want that to happen. <clears throat> so what you do is normally is you blow the ash off the end of the match. Oops, I'm going to break the camera here. Blow the ash off the end of the match, the excess ash. Make sure you've got a good hot coal on there. Get it set just right in the jaws. And then blow it up one more time just to make sure it's nice and hot. You get the gun up to your shoulder so you're in the firing position. When you're ready to fire, then you open the pan cover. You don't do that until you're ready to fire. That's the last thing you do before you fire is open the pan cover to expose the pan to the match. And then you drop it down in. Boom. And that's it. Pretty simple. So for those of you who were, may have been interested, didn't know anything about them, that's how they work.